produce, I've chosen to produce the opening sequence to a horror film named Room 666. Room 666 is an eternal prison for those who have sinned, a place where you truly pay for what you've done. Run by Reverend Jones and a selected 12 of his congregation, Room 666 is the gateway to hell. That is, until Christopher Maloney and family move to town. Despite being a good Christian family, can the Malloys go without sin in their new home? Can Chris deliver them from evil, or will they be yet again led into temptation? The production has been possible thanks to democratisation of film. Democratisation is something that's only recently occurred. Thanks to digitalisation and technological convergence, it's now possible for anyone to produce film. Technological convergence is the idea that technology systems have evolved towards performing similar tasks. Convergence can refer to previously separate technologies such as voice and telephony features, data and productivity applications, and video that now shares resources and interact with each other synergistically. The digitalisation has led to technological convergence. Film used to be shot genu generally on 16 to 35 millimetre film. To edit this film, you have to get it all developed. Now, 8p per foot is probably the cheapest anyone will do it. It takes far longer, although it's a lot cheaper. Since digitalisation really kicked in in the 1980s, thanks to Sony, films originally shot to film are harder to come across. However, it is still found that some directors may use original film for aesthetic purposes. For example, Spielberg's recent direction of the film Lincoln meant that it was shot to film rather than digitally. Now you can buy cameras everywhere, and editing software is also easily available. This is well shown through the production of the film Monsters. Director and producer Gareth Edwards made the film quite literally in his bedroom, through his own home computer, having used software he downloaded that is now available to everyone. Despite this democratisation and everyone now being given the, the chance to produce the film, it does not necessarily mean that they're going to be any good. Although I had the resources available to me, I still had to develop the skills required to make a good film. Democratisation is, is best shown on sites like Vimeo and YouTube. Here people can post anything from videos of sneezing pandas to professional short films. I have used YouTube regularly throughout to get ideas for my opening sequence as well as for help videos and software as I'm familiar with. To get the skills necessary to produce my opening sequence I did a practice run. This was shown in my preliminary task. I was asked to produce a short piece of film featuring match and action shot reverse shot and dialogue. As with any film, I had have, I have to have some sort of narrative and I could not break the 180 degree rule. To start, I got a handle on the production side of film. Within this preliminary task, I had to use technologies that would then be featuring my opening sequence. The first of these technologies was the search for non-digestic music. I chose a generic piece of music that I felt synonymous to the action genre of which my film is a part. I used it from YouTube. There was no copyright on this piece of music and therefore I was not infringing any laws. To film my preliminary task, I used a JVC of Aero. This camera was effective and created a good piece of film, however I felt that for my opening sequence I wanted a higher quality of shots. I also understood that a different camera would make it more accessible to change and adapt settings, such as the ISO and white balance. Once my footage was filmed, I thought it essential that I began editing as soon as possible. Before doing so, I had to become familiar with Final Cut Express, and to do so I watched tutorial videos on YouTube. The most helpful explained basic features and then some slightly more complex. To understand anything else that was not in these videos, I used help notes from sites appearing on Google. When I filmed, when my film was all edited, I uploaded it to my Tumblr blog. As he enters the room to see his boss up his match in action, and then as he walks through the door, it's shown again. Then, within the conversation with the boss, I used shot reverse shot throughout. When doing so, I ensured I did not break the 180 degree rule. I feel I didn't get as much footage as I could have, however I think it was effective. It does work effectively. It keeps the audience engaged rather than becoming monotonous. The lighting in the final stair shot was appalling, however I filmed it four times and each time the lighting was just so overpowering. I edited it slightly in post-production using the histogram and various other tools, but it was not enough. This is a major fault in my preliminary task. I now know that this is a major part I need to focus on during my opening sequence. To do so, I'll make sure I do a lighting test before. Here I will test my location also. There was a continuity error in the outdoor shot. This shot did not flow correctly. I should have filmed more of him running so I could ensure I cut in the right place. I will take this through to my opening sequence also. Knowing these errors was helpful when producing my opening sequence because I knew what needed to be focused on. I'll once again be using final cuts. As previously mentioned, I felt it was important to shoot a lighting practice first. I also used this as an opportunity for costume, makeup and location practice. 
I'm going to shoot this on a Nikon D4. This is the same camera I'm using my opening sequence. This is more effective in my film because of the lighting I was using. Because of how dark I needed my shot to appear whilst retaining quality and visibility, I knew I had to shoot it in a light room and change the brightness via the ISO settings on the camera. It was, it was shot at an ISO of 1600 inside. This was still slightly too bright and so I had to edit the light in post-production on Final Cut. This is another positive to using the D4. With the development of technology has come the development in these new camera settings. A few years ago, had I shot at 1600, I would have had an extremely grainy film. However, now cameras can go to the ISO of 3200. I did not want to push it to its limits and risk the slight noise, so I stayed within the limits and thought it would be safe. This would be sure to retain film quality. This is a practical example of how develop the developing digitalisation has aided my own, produ my own product. Another challenging part of the production was the production of my music. For this, I used Logic Pro and GarageBand. I had to watch a lot of tutorials on YouTube again, as I've never used this software. I had to have a song to originally base it on. I decided to base it on four songs. Overload by Dot Rotten, Time by Chasing Status, Not Giving In by Ruby Mental, and finally the dubstep remix of Hometown Glory by Jane. My main focus was Not Giving In. I liked how it was soft at the beginning and how it developed throughout. I felt this matched well with my narrative. There would be, of course, be no lyrics to this music because of the monologue I'm having over the top. I have used mostly samples and small instrumentals. The editing was fairly simple. Having watched it on YouTube, I just followed step-by-step -step tutorials and picked it up fairly quickly. The recording of the Lord's Prayer was simple also. I used a ger generic audio record system for this. I then uploaded it to Final Cut and placed it in the film the same way I did the music in my preliminary task. When looking at the opening sequence shot by shot, you can really see the effect digitalisation has had. In, ev in every shot, technologies used have been digital. At the beginning of my opening sequence, my distribution and production company titles first appear. I made these titles on Motion 5 using video tutorials from YouTube again. I had never used the software before, so it took a long time for me to learn how to get started. But when I did, I managed to produce them both within a day. And they came out just the way I wanted them to. My distribution company is called Home Pictures. This is a generic name, and the animation is simplistic and available to be appreciated by people of all genders, class and age. My production company is Shatter Productions. This is more applicable to the horror genre as I think the company would have a short, shorter budget and therefore would have more of a tendency to produce a narrow range of film. I also inserted the titles of my character names and other actors that would appear in the film. I did this in Lifetime. For these titles I used, the effect, I used certain effects chosen as I produced it. These titles for the internal pieces of film were produced in Lifetime. I then edited my film in Final Cut Express. I built on the skills learned in my preliminary task. I had to use basic features of Final Cut like the blade tool, auto corrections and transitions, as well as more advanced features like colour corrections and video effects. These developed skills have enabled me to learn about the micro elements involved in film production. However, also I've learned about the macro elements of film production, the digitalisation, technological convergence and democratisation, and how they've affected the films we see in cinemas. Since learning, I've been able to recognise real life examples of these developing technologies. For example, printed in The Guardian was an interview with Keanu Reeves about his new film, Side Effects. The article title was Dig Digital Change the Rhythm. Within it, he discusses how technology is evolving fast and the way for some filmmakers picking digital as an aesthetic as well as practical choice. Robert Rodriguez, for example. However, this is a section of the article that sums up the practical examples of these macro elements I've learned. This section reads, the availability of cheap, high quality video has helped increase the quality of low budget films. This is certainly true in documentary filmmaking, where digital has enabled people to hit the streets with an affordable means of filming. This sums up democratisation. Where we watch our films is also part of the digital story. Movies are streamed from the cloud and watched on iPads. They're no longer always shown in the big screen. The rise, to, the rise of digital technology has promoted a lot of debate about the death of film. This sums up how digitalisation has aided technological convergence and led to a new age of film.